This week, we got the tragic news that we lost uh, Steven Twitch boss. Rest in peace to that brother. And I know this hit home for you, Jay, because you've openly talked about, you know, your uh, attempts at suicide. Talk about the struggle that many black men face with mental health and, you know, why it's still not something we talk about enough. Um, I think it's still a stigma. Mm -hmm. uh, we are doing better. Uh, we are making strides. But I think the unfortunate thing, man, is that so many brothers are struggling silently uh, out of the fear of how will I be viewed if I tell the world or tell my circle, my family, my spouse, my partner that I'm struggling. And I think for me, um, it was difficult. I know when I was going through it after football um, to talk about, I didn't feel as if I had purpose. Mm -hmm. And many times for most men, we identify ourselves by what we do. And we identify ourselves by our abilities and when we can no longer do that and we feel useful. And I know after surviving two suicide attempts, I think what was important for me was to discover purpose. And that's not easy, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about find purpose, find purpose, but it's not easy. And the unfortunate in all of this is that sometimes our silent pain takes a hold of our actual thoughts. And as I say, the worst place a man could be, man, is left alone with his thoughts. Mm. And, um, and I just think, you know, it's, this has caused a, a, a real paradigm shift for us to really begin to consider how we interact with black men. Uh, we, we are so accustomed to seeing brothers be strong, but I think it's time for us to really uh, humanize brothers, that we all feel that we're Superman. And as, as I believe, we have Superman moments, mm -hmm. but the reality of it is that we're Clark Kent's. That's right. Is that we live in a reality where we have failures, we have disappointment, there's shame, there's guilt. But I think it's important for us to begin to humanize black men because, uh, you know, the human experience is tough right mm -hmm. now. What do you hear when you, what do you feel when you hear that, Dr. I think some of it is, the one thing that we don't talk about is what the system does to brothers, right? Black men, other men of color, Afro-Latino men. Um, when we think about things like mass incarceration, when we think about things like parents have to have the talk. I have a 16-year-old, my son is Miles, and having to have the talk with my son, worrying about, you know, when he leaves the house, hoping and praying he's gonna come back safe, right? That's a reality. And so yeah. many years ago, we did a study at the Acoma Project and something that resonated with me that I feel like is applicable to what you shared is it was a sister who had just come out of homelessness or being unhoused. She was just reunited with her kids. And one of the things she said in the study was, I'm already black, I'm already a woman, I don't also need to be crazy. And I think what she was trying to hint at was the more marginalized identities you add on a person, I think about black men and all the, you know, venom that goes at black men all the time and like all the ways in which brothers are torn down and not lifted up societally and, you know, in media and all those places. I think brothers struggle with this idea that if I'm also dealing with a mental illness or if I'm also perceived as crazy, which we don't say in our house about people, we say it about situations, um, it's very detrimental to them, right? And it tears them down even more. So when I hear that, I always want to think about what does the system do that fails brothers. There are That's things right. that brothers do, but there's stuff that the system does that hurts and harms our, our black men as well. I, I wanted to say, Jay, like, you know, when you hear about these situations where people actually do complete suicide, how does that make you feel being that you survived it twice? Oh, transparently, um, I think sometimes there's a bit of survivor's guilt, mm. and if, if I'm being transparent. Um, but then there's an appreciation for my survival because uh, I, I went to therapy and then I began to go through this healing process and I went back to school and became a therapist and I began sharing with brothers and began sharing with the world because as Dr. Alfie said, uh, the system, and even when you study mental health, it wasn't for black people. Right. You know, mental health was for rich white men. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from a, a system perspective, uh, I feel that it's my purpose and I feel that it's a, it is a God-given gift that he's given me on how to communicate that language. Because the reality of it, man, is brothers don't have the language. Mm -hmm. And people always tell me how you feel, tell me how you feel, but I don't know. You know, when I've seen brothers in practice, it's you have to give them the, uh, the emotional chart to identify what their emotions are. And most of us, we only know Jesus how to identify Christ. with anger. Yeah. And the reality of it is anger is a very low hanging fruit. Uh -oh. And so it's hard for brothers to even say, what is joy? Mm. I was in my late thirties before I was able to say, I knew what happiness was. Mm. Because most of us have had to bear the burden of our family, had to bear the burden of expectations, and we live in a world where there's a lot expected of us, and then if you feel that you can't perform, 
uh, you, you feel like, well, what, what, what is my reason for here? Mm -hmm. And performing is, ex is, is, is exhausting. When you say performing, what do you mean? So when you think about femininity, femininity is based off of being. But we look at masculinity uh, as doing. doing. Okay. And so I think it's really time for us to really look at masculinity as both, right? Being and doing. And you think about it, right? Let's, let's just say a brother's dating. You are now having to be conscious that I have to be able to financially not just provide, but I need to be able to f feel financially secure in what I do. Do I really want to be open that I make $60,000? Because they said a high value man makes 100000 So you think of, that's performance. You think about... See, that's you know, why y'all got to date broke men sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. So you think about it from the perspective that the performance of... Do I have the space to tell my spouse that I'm not doing well? Because if I tell them that I'm not doing well, are you still going to see me as a man? Mm -hmm. Will you weaponize the fact that I'm having a low moment and then you take my low moment and almost emotionally break me down and says, well, are you really a man? Because real oh, men don't works. cry. Right. But, yeah. but, but don't forget the part that's on your shirt. When do we teach young men that they are enough just because of who they are. That's right. So part of our work at Mental Health Alliance and at the Acoma Project is starting with kids and saying you don't have to do, have, be anything, that your value is in your existence. And while it sounds a little corny and hokey, I think the more you can put that in kids' heads when they're little, both for both partners in the relationship, right? So I won't even gender the partners, but if one of the partners is a man and he's with a partner who's tearing him down because he doesn't make enough money, what's wrong with the partner? Mm. Right? That's the yep. partner has some warped thinking too, thinking that the this man in this relationship is responsible for all the finances, for all of these things. And we were talking about uh, backstage. A relationship should never be two halves that yep. make a whole. A relationship is two holes that come together, right? right? Two full beings. And so we've got to teach young people from a very early age. Your value isn't just who you are. The, the miracles that it took for you to get here and all the people who didn't make it here, right? Like just born into this earth, we got to value life. And so we start with, I do that with my kids. Baby, you enough just because you're here. That's I don't right. need you to do anything. Right. And if you do that, I think that can go a little bit of the yeah. way. And that's, right. and that's a great message. Let, let, let's give people some more solutions, man, because, you know, my therapist says that uh, the cure for trauma is joy. Ooh. So how do, we, how do we instill some joy in people this holiday season? That's a good question. I don't know if we can instill joy. I think you can discover joy. Ooh, okay. And I think you discover joy uh, in some of the most uh, simplest of places. And I think some of the most simplest things in life are the most profound. Mm -hmm. We're often looking for these, uh, these, these big you know, things and, and looking for things to be so massive. But I think sometimes joy is just in the space of people that you actually enjoy being around. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about the holiday season, and we all know the song, it's the most wonderful time of the year. But it's not that for everyone. That's right, especially when certain family members come over. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think really identifying spaces and moments and, and even environments where just sitting here doing nothing is joy. Mm. You know, joy is not in doing. Sometimes joy is just in being in the Amen. presence mm -hmm. of, I don't have to cook, I don't have to put on, I don't have to Ooh. offer no advice. I can just be and just sit here. And so I think you discover joy in just some of those moments that we often overlook because we're so busy. Queen Dr. Alvin. I think it's also in teaching people, you talked about this earlier, what are emotions and what do they feel like, right? So, so many of us, I bet everybody in here can think of a person in their life where when they come around, they just bring, like, a, a cloud with them. Like, I have a cloud hanging over them. Energy and vampires. That's it, yeah. an energy vampire. Thank you for that. And I think we know what that feels like to be in the presence of an energy vampire. We know it doesn't feel good. So we can kind of identify those kinds of feelings. I think it's harder for us because we never take the time to be still. We never take the time to give ourselves an opportunity to think about what are all the emotions. So when we were all little, right, my kids went through it, y'all probably went through it, they would give you these emotions charts and they would show you happy, sad, whatever, you get little stickers and stuff. I think we forget a lot of that and we get so caught up in going through the motions, hustling, hustling, you know, it's a hustle, hustle culture and if you're not hustling, then, you know, you ain't about nothing. And so 
because we don't ever take the time to sit down and really think about what it means to feel different feelings, as corny as that sounds, it's important. Mm -hmm. The one thing I always say in terms of fighting this idea of, you know, with black people, I think in the mental health field, we always want to label all black people as being traumatized. Yes, a lot of us have trauma, but that is not the only part of our experience. And so if we give ourselves room to understand what it means to feel something other than trauma. Yes. There's one thing that I love is like people are afraid of being called an angry black woman or angry black man. Again, that's society putting stuff on us. And what I always say is angry is an emotion. Yes, I am black. Yes, I am a woman. All of those things can be okay, right? So not allowing other people to dictate to us what kind of emotions are safe, what kind of emotions are normal, what kind of emotions should most often be associated with us as black people, and just allowing yourself to feel. So get a chart, start looking at all them emotions, think about times in your life when you have felt those different emotions on that chart, and use that as a guide to allow yourself to feel the full range of feelings that mm. you have. That's why you got them. You're supposed to use that full range of emotions, feel your feelings. That's right.